You know a word you never want to hear bantied about when it comes to anything, whether it happens to be people not feeling good, uh, some sort of illness going around, anything. The word epidemic, that's a bad word. You do not want to be suffering through any kind of an epidemic of any sorts at any point in your life. Unfortunately, in the United States, they're in the throes of what's considered an opioid e epidemic. I mean, it's, there's a lot of pain pills that have been liberally prescribed to people for so many years. A lot of these drug companies have kind of got away with, you know, like, well, I guess maybe it's not the drug companies as much as it's a lot of doctors. doctors yeah, yeah, they're just push things out the door and it's, you know, it's a, it's a real shame we find out there's a lot of people that are addicted to stuff oh, sure. that have a lot of problems that, that maybe aren't their own fault. I mean, maybe there was some abuse involved, but I don't think it's always their fault because sometimes you kind of get led down the primrose path. You believe the guy in the white coat who says oh, like, sure. this is the thing you're supposed to do. And then all of a sudden you find yourself. I'm addicted to it. Yeah. You're, you're in the middle of this epidemic. So the white house came out today and said, that I'm Cody from Wall Street Breakdown. This is Anthony from Wall Street Breakdown. We're in the middle of talking about something that's a little bit serious. It doesn't matter who we are, right? So the White House came out today and said that in 2015, the actual cost of the opioid epidemic was six times, six, six times what they thought it was originally. $504 billion dollars. Yeah, That's shake your head, right? That's what it cost the United States economy. Why? Why did it cost that much? Basically because of the healthcare involved. The loss of productivity and the loss of people doing their jobs or being productive in the job market. And on top of that, all the criminal justice costs. Because you end up having people who, when they can't get whatever they're looking for, unfortunately, some people resort to, you know, unsavory... Oh, definitely. It's crime. Yeah. It's definitely, it it's crime. I'm not sure if we want to blame a lot of people out there. I definitely don't want to get on the bandwagon of blaming a bunch of people who are addicted to stuff in the midst of an epidemic where clearly we're saying that if this isn't just happening to one or two people. This isn't just happening in one or two states in the United States. This is covering the full gamut of the United States. There are a lot of people affected by this and we're, we're rooting for people to be able to straighten their lives out for sure and have a lot of these people that have actually pushed some of these drugs and put these people in these predicaments to be held accountable. I think accountability is a big deal, whether it's a drug company or the doctor or whoever it happens to be that's somebody has to be the, the, the final say to say like no more. Right. And I think the United States and Donald Trump have really they've made this a, a national issue at this point. I think that's a really big deal. And I think that's the right step forward. It is. But, so. but I'm concerned that how many people are, have found themselves in so much deep water already that they're not actually going to be able to, to right the ship. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. That, that's the problem is you end up with so many people who, who knows what other issues they've got going on, the, the lifestyles that they live, maybe their quality of life. You know, like if you find yourself already not having things really well off or maybe you just don't have the support structures that you might need, maybe the help isn't available to you like it would be. Maybe you live in a smaller town, help maybe not available. Maybe you just, if you're employment wise, you're not, you don't have the hours to go to wherever you need outreach or any of that kind of stuff. And people make excuses or, oh, yeah. or whatever it is. And these people get caught up in this. There needs to be some accountability. They need to go back and figure out exactly. I mean, like, it's tough to pin down who specifically was doing it. I'm sure a lot of the individual states have really been monitoring this as this has become a bigger and bigger talking point over the last couple of years. But the big deal is we want these people to get better. We want these drugs to be off the street. Unless you're in some dire type of pain, if, if you're suffering from a from cancer or something like that, I totally understand why you're going to need something to make your quality of life better. Sure, right? You know, you need to still be able to live the time that you've got left to live. But when you're just prescribing things just because somebody's got a sore shoulder, you go to the gym today? Oh, yeah. Too. Yeah, me, me too, right? You got some sore stuff? Oh, yeah, for sure. You take any painkillers no. for it? No, me no. either, man. No. You know, like, you really got to be able to weigh out the pros and cons of this kind of stuff. There needs to be some accountability. We need to support these people. We need to get the support structures in place. We can't have the White House just come out and say there's an epidemic. We can't have the White House come out and say it's six times bigger in 2015 than it was, you know, that we assumed it was. $504 billion. Great. Now the onus is on you. If you think the economy is losing productivity, if you think the abuse is causing all sorts of criminal justice money to be lost, then you need to go out and reinvest the government's money and get these people the help that they need, make sure the support structures are in place, 
People need assistance. That's the fact of the matter. You don't find yourself in any of these type of instances, whether it be, I mean, we've heard up here with fentanyl. I mean, there's, oh, big deal. Alberta's had a lot big of big fentanyl big. issues up yeah. here. We need to get the support structure in place because not everybody can back themselves up. Just like we do on this channel all the time, we're here trying to help back you up as best we can with your portfolio by bringing you the news, maybe with a different kind of an angle to it. That's the same thing that the White House needs to do. They need to go out and not just chastise their citizens, but they need to give them as much support as they possibly can, make it available, help these people get clean, and make sure you're having the people that are out there pushing any of these drugs, which I'm sure they're pretty trepidatious about pushing now. Yeah, now now that the now media spotlight's yeah. on it, but that doesn't... That doesn't take away all the addicts that they made. Oh no, that They're doesn't still take out there, right? that, yeah. That doesn't take away the fact that when you stop getting your drugs from a prescription from a pharmacy, where else are going to go for it? You're going to go to a lot more shady avenues to end sure. up getting stuff, and unfortunately, that puts you in even more harm's way than oh, just yeah. taking the drugs. Do now you're physically putting yourself in harm's way to procure whatever it is. That's an addiction that you maybe have started on the most innocent level possible because right. you were prescribed it for something that really didn't justify you being prescribed something so yeah, strong. We need the White House to go out and do something. Don't just talk about it. Let's see a little bit of action, Donald Trump. I personally am a Republican fan. I like Donald Trump, but I definitely, definitely would like to see a little action involved in this. I'm Cody from Wall Street Breakdown. I'm Anthony from Wall Street Breakdown. There you go. Look, he's talking for himself. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button, click the notification bell, thumbs up for this video, thumbs up for all videos. Thumbs up for people getting strong and getting through this. Seriously, here at Wall Street Breakdown, we are backing you up. We want to make sure that everybody's getting all the support they need, and we, we've got your back in here for sure. We feel you. You know, it's never good to be behind the eight ball and have to feel like you're struggling to, to tread water, man. We, we want people to be able to figure things out. Leave us a comment. We love hearing from you. I'm sure there's a lot of people that have gone through this already, gone through some sort of addiction, hard times, any of that kind of stuff. If you're already on the other side of it, if, you already, if you're doing better, head above water, life's going well, don't forget reach your hand back pull somebody else up with you that's the best thing you can do morally pull somebody else up with you we love talking to you guys we love seeing you guys you guys have an outstanding monday